Reduction possibility curves can be used to illustrate a number of issues faced by countries all over the world. In most modern economies, the basic idea is to achieve growth, to make the country richer, to increase the wealth of its citizens, or some of them, and to meet the increasing population's ever-expanding needs and demands. Achieving growth requires an increase in production. But we know that industrial byproducts have an adverse effect on the environment. So any increase in production must also have an increased negative impact on the environment. On our horizontal axis, we'll plot the quality of our environment, where a higher quality means lower CO2 emissions, less pollution, better water quality, and so on. On the vertical axis, the production of all goods and services, cars, food, housing, and everything else, are measured. A movement from point B to point A indicates that as more goods and services are produced, the lower the environmental quality. Part of the cost of producing more goods and services results in the cost to the environment. Now, we as a society have to decide where we wish to be on the production possibility curve. The production possibility curve can also be used to illustrate the difficulty in balancing short-term desires and long-term consequences for environmental quality. In the short run, we look at the consequences of our decisions for the current generation. In the long run, we look at the impact that our current decisions will have on future generation, say 60 or 600 years from now. The production possibility curve in diagram A shows the current trade-off between increasing economic growth and environmental quality. To increase output and produce more goods, we end up sacrificing environmental quality. If this environmental degradation causes the depletion of resources, irreversible damage due to pollution, and the build-up of toxic chemicals, then the production possibilities for future generations are in fact diminishing. In the diagram on the right, this is demonstrated by the inward shift of the production possibility curve. If future generations wish to have the same level of goods and services, they will have to be content with a lower level of environmental quality. Alternatively, if they want better environmental quality, they must accept a lower level of production. The production possibility curve also sheds some light on the dilemmas faced by poor and developing countries. In this diagram, the trade-off between consumption and investment is shown for both poor and wealthy countries. Rich countries are able to devote more resources to the production of capital goods, such as machines, tools and factories, than poor countries can, with the result that rich countries are able to grow faster, producing more, improving efficiency, which leads to a widening gap between poor and rich countries. Although these production possibility curves are tools of theory, they do illustrate a number of important principles, such as scarcity, choice, opportunity cost, efficiency and inefficiency. We will use these production possibility curves regularly. They're useful to illustrate a number of important issues in modern economics. So, we'll just add this to our toolbox.